This is Hadrian's Wall, the 80 mile long barrier between Roman Britain and the barbarian north. And this is Bedoswald, one of the forts that protected this far flung corner of that empire. Now, we know a lot about the buildings from these remains, but what about the soldiers who lived and died here? What do we know about them? This is Bedoswald Cemetery and it's under threat from the elements. In fact, some of it could have already fallen down that escarpment. We've been given the fantastic opportunity to excavate this site to find out what's here, what's been lost and what's going to happen to it in the future. This is the first time ever that a military cemetery has been excavated on Hadrian's Wall and it'll give us a rare insight into the lives and beliefs of the people who lived here 1700 years ago. And as usual, Time Team have got just three days to find out. Hadrian's Wall was built between 122 and 138 AD as the northern boundary of conquered Britain. For the next 300 years, soldiers from all over the Roman Empire manned the 17 forts along the wall, one of their main bases being here at Bedoswald. The rectangular wall of the fort is still visible today, as are some of the encampment's remains, but it's in the fort's visitor's centre that we begin our investigation into the final resting place of Bedoswald's Roman soldiers. Well, that's a very nice little model. It's wonderful, but, isn't it? It's yeah, wonderful. but we don't actually know that it looked like that, do we? Well, I think we do, because apart from the fact that some of it actually sort of surviving as walls and so on, we know a lot about the layout of Roman forts, well, in Britain, don't we? The evidence on which most of this model is based is geophysical. Every Roman fort had the same buildings in it, basically, um, yeah. not necessarily in the same order. Um, I said most of it's geophysics, but this whole area here, this whole quarter of the fort, has been totally excavated over the last 12 years. Mainly by you. Mainly by me, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. where's the bit where we're going to dig? It's over there in the corner of the model. Here? Among the yeah. trees. Oh, with yes. these little tombstones. Yeah, That's because right. in fact we know a lot about the forts and, and the settlements, but we know almost nothing about the cemeteries on the wall, don't we? No, no cemetery on Hedges Wall has ever been excavated. But do date. we actually know there's a cemetery here? Yes, it was um, found as a result of ploughing in 1959-1960. So why are we going to dig it up now? It has been, it has been damaged, um, first of all by ploughing and subsequently by um, just the rutting of farm vehicles going over it when it's damp. But we have had a recent episode of er erosion. Uh, a piece of the edge of the cliff has gone over, leaving a clean section. So is so there less of this now than there was in Roman times? Considerably time? less. The river edge now is back to here. And perhaps on the line from the trees there, sort of in, in the same sort of curve, round to here. So it's sort of like this? That's right. Round to here? Has gone. I think we better start, don't you? <laughs> This is a big site for geophys, but they do have some earlier results to help them concentrate their resources and help us plan our first trenches. As well as the Roman burial ground, we're interested in the field adjacent to the west gate of the fort, and in particular, this large elliptical area. The previous geophysics of this part of the site have suggested two roads joining just outside the west gate, surrounded by anomalies. Now, many roads out of major Roman settlements had roadside burials and monuments, so these blobs could be tombs or mausolea. But we'll start up in the so-called cemetery field to assess what's left of this burial site and whether or not it's damaged. So we're slap bang in the middle of the cemetery now, yep, aren't we? Yep, just here. And the river's over there and the fort's down there. Do we yet know where we're going to put the trench in? I think we've got a vague idea. Yeah, I mean, the issue yeah. in this area, really, our first priority at the moment is to establish how well the remains are still preserved. So we want to dig in the area that's least, that's, that's most damaged, because everything else would be better than that. And it looks like this sort of area by the yeah, gate. Yeah, I mean, really. we thought here, yeah, because right. it's rutted and, and lumpy sure anyway. Enough. You know, it's where, the, where machinery's coming to the field. Now, although we keep referring to this field as a cemetery, we don't expect to find coffins and skeletons here. Roman soldiers tended to be cremated and their ashes then buried, sometimes in a pot or an urn. 
So we're going to be looking for tell-tale signs, such as dark circles in the soil and bits of ash, pot or charred bone. But it's time-consuming work. On such an important site as this, everything has to be done by hand. This is a World Heritage site, right? Yeah. So we haven't just turned up here and started digging? Oh, no. I mean, we've done here what we have to do on all the sites, which is to write a project design, as that's the archaeological jargon for it, a document that says why you, why you want to dig, uh, how it's going to be conducted, you know, what the reasons for coming and so on. Except here, because it's a World Heritage site, it's, it's a massive document. This is our business plan for the uh, next three days. Absolutely. I don't think many people realise this, but, but in the end, archaeology is destruction. You have to take the site apart to understand it. And if people in future are going to understand it, then you've got to leave a lot of good records. So there's got to be good plans, good sections, notes about it all, photographs, so that in theory somebody could come back and at least mentally put the site back together. Well, we seem to have got off to a good start. We've just turned up some glass that could possibly have come from a Roman urn. There you go. Oh, wow. That's nice. That looks, that looks Roman, doesn't it? Miss that sort of bluey-green colour. obviously isn't modern. Well, that's a really nice bit. That's just our first bit of Roman artefact from here. It bodes well. As one of the reasons for this dig is to assess the threat of erosion, Stuart's looking for clues as to why the escarpment has moved almost 100 metres closer to the fort in the last 1,700 years. Well, that's quite impressive, isn't it? Quite a right. drop, isn't it? It is, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Is that being caused by the river, do you think? It may have been started by the river, but uh, the... The main operation seems to be rainwater soaking into the boulder clay mm -hmm. and uh, seeping into fissures and taking plates of boulder clay off. And of course, now um, it's, the erosion's got this far, mm -hmm. those fissures in the boulder clay are the archaeology itself. Because right. they are the ditches of the fort yeah. and the vallum ditch and all the other features. So the archaeology is causing the erosion. The, the, archaeologist, it the archaeology is causing the erosion, which is destroying the archaeology right. <laughs> slowly and steadily. Yeah. 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 So what have, what have you got then? Um, it's <laughs> wet. <laughs> oh, well, I can see it got wet, got yeah. Very wet. Oh. Our wet. first human bone. So, Jackie, so I don't know how you can tell, Jackie. Yeah, how can you tell? That, for instance, I think is probably a piece of tibia. If you run your finger down the front of your tibia, it's very sharp. You know the shin bone, the bit that hurts when somebody cracks the you on it with a hockey stick? The bit that broke yeah. in my leg. Yeah. Well, that's the, you see, that's got a very sharp yeah, yeah. edge to it oh, there, yeah. and that's, that's what gives that particular piece right. of bone away. The fact that we're finding this stuff coming up on the top soil, do you think that means most of our cremation is going to be disturbed? We've got a sort of bit of... We reckon this looks like the top of one here. You can oh, see yes. Yeah. That, that, that black area yes. there. Yeah. 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 And there's a bit of tile there. Yeah, yeah. Tony was wondering if it was a sort of box, you know, box yeah. around it. But if we're finding the bone in the topsoil, does that mean most of them probably ploughed away, or does that always happen? We may not just have burials. The cremated bone can turn up in other types of deposit as well. Um, for instance, you didn't collect all the bone to bury it. Mm. They only collected well, a certain amount. Bits, yeah, so good. you may have mm. pyre debris with bits of, you know, bits of the, the pie that was left over with, with cremated bone in it, and that's just been lying around on the surface and being sort of spread about during the ploughing. So we may or may not have found the site of our first cremation burial. But our early optimism that Trench 1 is awash with Roman artefacts is beginning to fade. That characteristically Roman bluey-green glass we found isn't as old as we thought. This is the base ring of a bottle. And I'm not totally convinced it's Roman. I thought she was going to say it's plucked from the neck of a Roman courtesan or something. No, no, I am not totally sure about that. I think it might be the bottom of... 17th century bottle. The Romans did have glass, though, didn't oh, they? Oh, yes, they did. And would they, they have been likely to have glass up here? Oh, yes. Um, they certainly, you find glass bottles, um, square bottles, um, and occasionally you find pieces of very elegant drinking vessels, um, painted glass and chipped glass and that sort of thing. So these Romans that are being buried here, they're not Italian Romans, are they? Such, but where, no. where did the legion come from? The, uh, the unit came originally from Dacia, which is modern Romania. That's right. First cohort right. of Dacians, a thousand strong, Hadrian's own. So they're not, they're not, they're not, it's not even that they're Romans and they're not from Rome. No. They're not even from Italy. No, no, no. They're, they're from, from somewhere Europe. else in the yeah. Roman Empire, which yeah. is normal, isn't it? Absolutely normal, yes. Yeah. We, we've actually got cohorts of Britons in Dacia. With Trench 1 well and truly underway, it's time to check out the field beside the fort and its intriguing geophysics. 
Okay. Extraordinary thing out on this west side. Looks like a village mm. green, doesn't it? That's yeah, right. it, it really is odd. So yeah. we've homed in on part of that. Okay. Ooh. And <clears throat> there you can see, see just part of that quiet area. Yeah. With right. noise to the north, Hadrian's Wall itself here. Yeah. Uh, and then these blobs which we're not quite sure what they are. Would you think that's what you'd get from occupation, from buildings and so on? It looks a bit like that, but it's just possible it's associated with some sort of burning. Now, whether oh. that's industrial burning or, or whether it's something to do with the fire. <clears throat> now, with this particular blob, there's some high resistance anomalies that might just be a structure. Right. right. So my feeling is... Roadside mausoleum or something like that. Homing on there. Yeah. So Trench 2 finally goes in to check this section of our mysterious elliptical area. Hello, Andrew. Yeah? I think we might have a little hop earlier. Are you joking, really? No, I think so. Oh, it wow. looks like it. It's not in brilliant condition, but I'm sure that's what it is. Gosh. So he was uh, cremated with his boots on then? It looks that way. <laughs> To get an idea of what we may find in our burial field, we've asked Jackie, our cremations expert, to build us a Roman funeral pyre. This is much more than just building a bonfire. In fact, it's the first time anyone's recreated such a pyre. These particular types are, are known as a, a bustum burials. Bustum. Bustum. And this is actually quite a large hole that we've got under here. There, it's about 70 centimetres wide, about that wide. Yeah and about a metre 20 long, so about sort of so long. And the idea of these particular types of pyres was that the pyre was constructed over something which was going to form the place of burial. So the idea is that as the pyre burns down, it the body actually, drops in. It, it burns straight into the, what will be the grave. What did they think would happen to them after they'd been cremated? The idea of cremating the body was that it would be an immediate release of the spirit. Yeah. As opposed to just sort of burying it in the ground and the body having to decompose, by cremating you would immediately free the spirit so it could go straight to heaven. There was also a certain amount of cleansing, the idea of cleansing. Fire as a cleanser is quite a common um, idea. Mick? Yeah? Have a listen to this. Oh, yeah, and there's this grass is yellower, isn't it? It is, isn't it? So, war, probably? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're off it there, aren't you? Oh, what? No, don't know about no. that. Three stones must be a wall. Well, one stone's a stone, two stone's a wall, three stone's a building, oh, four that's... stone's a palace. That's what, that's, that's, that's what <laughs> well, Frank that... Rath's taught me at university. That stone there. <laughs> Back in the cemetery field, things are hotting up. That doesn't that's look heavy. like root to me. That's quite a hefty piece there. Some very old looking wood has been uncovered in Trench 1. It's obviously not the coffin somebody was cremated in because that wood hasn't that been wood burned. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't have thought wood would survive for that long. We're wondering now if it's some kind of wood lined cremation thing. We do occasionally thing. get cremations in wooden boxes. Um, little wooden boxes. But they're quite, quite rare because obviously the wood rarely survives and people don't, don't know what the no. cremation was in. No. And, um, Intrigues at the burial site, but it's so late in the day that Phil's only got time for a cursory inspection of his trench in the field beside the fort. I've just got a, another piece of pot out of here, but it's, it's still very, 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 very rounded. Look, yeah, see, that's plough, isn't it? Yeah, just turned. turns it round, makes all these makes all these edges really, really rounded. So, yeah, we're still really near the surface. Oh, god, ah, yeah, but I mean, this. This is a totally sealed uh, layer. I mean, she's right at the bottom, the bottom of the of the actual soil, isn't it? And yeah. there's just the turf was just peeling off. Definitely. Where's this wood then, Corenza, that you've got? Um. Well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. It's just under where we had that cremation. Yeah. Um, so that's what it turned out to be, is it? Well, there was. I mean, we can see there's still more of the cre cremated material in the section there. But yeah. When it, well, you can see, and again, you can see it was sat right on top of this bit of wood, but... Um, That's it's, weird. It's, well, it looks as if it's actually going under the clay. Yeah, I think it's maybe a clay there, floor it? which has been laid on top of it, and yeah. maybe that's just created very, very good preservation conditions. There's only Roman pottery coming from this layer over the top of it, so it seems right. to be completely sealed. And it doesn't seem to have been burned itself. But it's clearly very, very closely associated with the cremation. The, the other possibility is it's a tree root, but it's a, 
It's it doesn't very look big. like a tree root. It doesn't, does it? Does I mean, it? But no. on the other hand, it, for it to be Roman wood surviving is too much to hope, isn't it? As the end of day one approaches, there's just enough time left to finish our Bustam cremation. And to see what happens to a body during a cremation, we've added some cuts of meat bought from a local butcher. It may be too early to say what's going on in our trenches, but if the gods are with us and the rain holds off, there's at least one result we should get by the morning. Beginning of day two of our excavation of the Roman soldiers' cemetery at Bad Oswald. This is trench two, which as you can see, we've hardly started and is still a bit of a mystery. But Mick already wants to go ahead and dig a trench three. <laughs> What's your problem, Mick? Well, we've decided not to pursue any more geophysical anomalies in this area here, but to go back and look at the geophysics results for the area nearer the fort. And the reason for that is we think that we might be dealing with a vicus on this side of the fort as well as on the other side. Hang on, Tony, remind me what a vicus is. The civilian settlement on the outside of the fort, the, the, the place where the uh, wives, dependents, families, pubs, shops, traders in various sort of knickknacks. But in the beautiful model that you showed me yesterday morning, there was the fort and then green fields and then a cemetery somewhere away. Yes, well, the model was made before we got the Jefferson. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> We've actually got Vicus buildings on the other side on the model, uh, but not on this. But you see, what we were thinking is that perhaps the cemetery up there is up there because there was actually a Vicus in that open space that's on the model. So we're now searching for a large settlement, a Vicus, in a field we originally thought contained just two roads and some tombs. Trench 3 will look at the area where Geophys suggests these two roads meet. What's not clear at the moment is why there might be Vicus buildings on this side of the fort, when we know from previous excavations there's a large village on the other side. To get a broader picture, Mick's gone up in the chopper with Stuart. Gets me every time, that. <laughs> We're out in this field to the west now. There's, there's Trench 2, look. And you can see the cemetery is actually some way away, isn't it? There's, it is. You see our white storage box? Yes. And then Carenza's Trench, Trench 1 at the top. It's actually quite a distance. Yeah, that is a high spot of ground, which the Romans like for their cemetery areas. Now, if you look below you now, the, the, the line of the Hadrian's Wall would have been where the road where is. Where the road is, yeah. This first ditch line that you see is the earlier Hadrian's Wall that was built in turf, but later on they replaced it with stone. But around Bird Oswald, they didn't build on the same line. They built the stone wall on this separate is, line. Is, is that the only place on the wall where they That's didn't right. right. So and there's got to be a reason for absolutely. that. Absolutely. Right. Back at Trench 2, we've unearthed something of interest. It's in really good condition, isn't it? Yes, That's what we reckon, yeah. yeah. Well, that needs to be cleaned up quite a bit, to be sure. But you are going to be able to tell us what it oh, is. Yes, I think so. No yeah, I've got a feeling as well. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> not committing ourselves to it. It's very clear. <laughs> it's not just lovely datable coins we're finding in Trench 2. There's also lots of evidence of habitation, like flagstones and bits of wall. But the weather conditions aren't helping us. Our amphibian friend may have enjoyed the overnight rains, but our attempt at a Roman cremation has literally fizzled out. We'll try again later. But first of all, our cremations and mysterious buried wood in Trench 1 are looking decidedly damp. So, there's a lot of mopping up to be done. This is this uh, bit of wood that we've been talking about. You can see why we're sort of faintly intrigued about it. It's got all that cremated stuff straight on top of it. Yes, and Roman materials and it's on it. straight under this clay here, isn't it? It seems, yeah, we're thinking that clay might be a sort of clay floor or something. I suppose it could be Roman. I'm tempted to think it's just a piece of rubbish, but... <laughs> um, you'd have to look at more of it, I guess. It's not as bashed about as we thought it might be, is it? I'm glad you think it looks better than you, yeah, you feared it I was do. going to. Oh, that's good. Well, that was one of our aims up here, was to see what the preservation was. was Absolutely. That. Well, if the preservation is sufficiently good, we've got wood preserved, then that's really <laughs> It can't be bad, can it? No. Back in the incident room, Mick and Stuart are taking a closer look at possible reasons why the escarpment behind Bud Oswald has changed so dramatically over the last 1,700 years. What's actually happening here is that all this area here is boulder clay. Yeah. 
This is this sort of mix of sand and yeah. silt, and it's, it's very unstable. It's that orangey yellow stuff we've got in some of the trenches, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. it. Well, it, all that, and eventually they get so much water, they just flush so themselves away. So the whole away. thing slumps. And it, what happens is that once it finds a weakness, yeah. the whole thing gives way. Wow. And it usually happens all at one go. Yeah. It's not just a, a tiddly little bit falls off the end. The whole lot goes. Presumably you're talking about heavy rainstorm and, and, and uh, erosion from the river. Is there any other yeah. possibility that it that yeah, might I, cause it? I th I, the, you've, you've, you've hit on one. That's a yeah. very serious flood of the yeah. river and it really yeah. sweeps down. Yeah. The other is an earthquake. Really? And you, you do have earthquakes in this country. Well, I know, They're not I know, unknown, I know, are they? Uh, and interestingly, if you look at the geological map, this is a major fault line cool. running right across the edge of, of this escarpment. Yeah. Um, and if you're on a major earthquake or not, it's time to see how the changes in the landscape have affected the site, and most importantly, to discover if any of the burial ground has disappeared over the edge of the escarpment. Do you see anything down there, Katie? No, not yet. I'll, I'll give it um, a clean and see if I can see anything. I mean, if it's quite clean. Like you said, it's presumably you'd be able to see anything like charcoal or ash or stuff anyhow. Yeah, I mean, I can't see any skeletons or anything <laughs> sticking out the side. <laughs> so it doesn't look, from what you can see, as if the cemetery extended this far? Not as far as I can see, no. So the burial field is still all on the top of the hill. Despite this good news, I can't help but feel despondent as yet another wave of rain passes over our dig. Mick, we're at this beautiful place, World Heritage Site, yeah. probably the most important site that we've ever dug at, the longest single Roman monument in the world. And look, look what we've got. We've got three manky holes like this, covered in soggy stone, a hole here and these are the finds. Whatever <laughs> is a miserable going devil, on. Yeah, you really are a miserable devil. What we've been able to show at the top yeah. is that while we haven't got an individual cremation at the moment, the whole area is covered in bits of cremated bone. We're in the area of the cemetery. We've been over the cliff. When I say we, I mean Katie's Katie. been over the cliff. And she's found nothing. But that's good. That's good because that's good. it means that the cliff isn't eroding back into the cemetery. Yeah. We don't have to dig a trench along there to save that. It's all within the site. Down here, you remember we started out with the idea that there might be a cemetery here. Yeah. On the model, there's nothing at all because they didn't know what was here. Yeah. The early geophysics had this peculiar shape and all this noise around it. These two holes have shown us that we're in the middle of another bit of the Vicus. As soon as you came out of the west gate of the fort over there, you'd have gone into it. And when you went up in that direction, you'd have got to the cemetery about where our white box is. And so you've got this long linear settlement, then the fort, and then a long linear settlement the other side. So, you know, we didn't know this before we came here. This isn't cemetery, this is settlement. So while I'm moaning, you're saying we might have found a small town? I, exactly, and I said, I said to Tony before lunch, I said, where are the nearest big Roman settlements around here? And he said, well, Carlisle that way and Corbridge that way. I said, so if you wanted a market in this part of the country, this would be a very good candidate. And he said, yeah, it's somewhere in the middle. So. I thought we hadn't got anything, and we've got Milton Keynes. Yeah, well, people think look at it like that. Yeah, but I mean, it's... well, this is something we hadn't expected, and the good news doesn't stop there. Geophysics have finally finished their survey of the burial field. I hear you think you've come up with something. Yeah, we've we've just finished the uh, the cesium vapor measurements. And What's cesium see... vapor? Cesium vapor is it's one of the ways we measure the Earth's magnetic field, but in fact, it's far more sensitive than the usual instruments that we use. And can you see, we've got some nice individual blobs which may actually be cremations, not certain about this, but... These green things? The green things, yeah. And can you see in here, there's a semicircle coming around there? That's about three metres across. Now, in fact, that, as far as I can work out, we may find some cremations that are actually surrounded by a small ditch. That could be a small ditch. That's what happens with those cremations. They dig a little ditch around the outside. Well, apparently so, yes. I mean, I've never seen them before, but I have something that could be a, a, a small ditch about three metres across or so in the middle of what's meant to be a cemetery. I think they should really have a little look at that. 
So Trench 4 goes in the top field to look for Geophys's burial. The early results look good. Tony's found cremation evidence, although there's no sign yet of an urn. How's our enigmatic trench going then, Carenza? Well, it's been very enigmatic yeah. right at the moment. Why? We, well, we, we uncovered a bit more to try and find the rest of this wood, uh, piece of wood here, which is curving on underneath that dark band there. You can see a few bits of it. We've now found a very sort of ashy patch there, which we think might be a cremation. There's another dark charcoaly patch there. This wood is coming up all over the place now. We've got a, another bit there. There's another bit right over there. That wood, Jackie, looked remarkably like the size of wood that you and I were humping around yesterday late afternoon. Could it be anything to do with the cremation? Well, it, hmm, what, what I would be unhappy about there is that, one, one, the piece of wood itself obviously hasn't been burned. I mean, it's, that, it's a dark colour, but Neither that's because bit, it's water. No, yeah. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> we're going to try again later. So could it be a structure, Tony? It could be. I, I mean, I... I'm, st I'm still a bit worried by, you know, having w wet timber. I, mean, I know the, the top of this hill is, is very wet, but, you know, wet timber and interpreting it as being Roman on the top of the hill. But, I but it's also difficult to see what Oh, I it, see, so it, you, it might not be. be that old anyway. Well, it, the trouble is it's going underneath that clay deposit there. Yeah. Uh, upon which there are, there are various sort of... None of you have got the slightest <laughs> idea. <laughs> no, well, we've got no, we haven't. As no. I said, it's Basically. enigmatic. We need, I think we really need to get a move on. We need to get more of these timbers uncovered we've yeah. got to see if they make a path and i think we've we've really got to go into if you're happy with that tony yeah, i think we've got, got to, start to be done yeah pulling it apart while carenza and tony attempt to solve the mystery of the wood in trench one it's time to relight our own Buston funeral pyre which has had a chance to dry out hi i won't get too close it's a little bit on the warm side you've done it you've got it alight from over there i thought it was another failure <laughs> thank you <laughs> See, you should have had faith in me. Oh, I always did. It was right. the others who didn't. Just got to let that warm up a little bit now. You can tell how incredibly hot it is. The air's really shimmering above yeah. it, isn't it? Well, it's actually cool on this side. You can't get anywhere near the other side. What sort of temperatures do they get up to? Well, you can get up to 1,000 degrees, no problem. Wow. Certainly in the centre of the pie when it's at its hottest. And you can see why this kind of structure actually enables it to keep burning. Yeah, well, the idea of the structure is that it, it's quite an open lattice work, um, and the brushwood infill which we had was just to help it get going in the first place. And that will maintain temp a good temperature for a long, long time, which is what you need really to get rid of all the, the, the tissues in the body when you're cremating it. How long do you think it'll burn for? Uh, well, it'll, it'll probably start to collapse before too long. I mean, about three hours to get the main body down, but it'll just keep going all night, probably. So, success with our pyre. But after so much optimism, disappointment in Trench 1. The wood that had promised so much for the last two days now seems to be at best a few hundred years old, put there by a farmer to give easier access into this wet, boggy field. Originally, we thought it might be Roman wood because it was under Roman cremation debris. But that now seems to be due to the soil being churned over by ploughing. What you got, Mick? Oh, I don't think you've seen these up, Tony. That's the, a silver coin of the Emperor Domitian. Yeah. And that's a Roman intaglio. What's an intaglio? That's the glass bit out of a finger ring that's used as a seal. And it's uh, sort of purple glass. And these come off that big settlement down the bottom there. How about you, Cranes? Have you got any finds? <laughs> well, just about, yeah, we had a really frustrating afternoon, well, all day, really, chasing all this wooden structure. We thought it might be a Roman pyre or something for a while, but it's not. It's modern, which is a bit depressing. But um, we've now started to hit cremations. We've got a couple. They're not in very good condition. We've got this wonderful bit of pot there that's just come up. Is this anything to do with cremations? I think it's the base of a cremation urn, yeah. Um, hopefully, we'll find some more tomorrow when we try to find the extent of the cemetery yeah. going that way. Yeah. It's been a typical topsy-turvy time team day. The rain's been tipping down, the diggers have been struggling through it, but round about lunchtime, I think virtually all of us thought we weren't going to find anything at all in this wonderful site. And then after lunch, the cremation started popping up. And down over here, it now seems that we might have the largest Roman settlement between Corbridge and Carlisle. But the odd thing about it is, that even though the Romans didn't leave here till about 400 AD, all the finds around here stop around 200 AD. 
beginning of day three and what looks like a completely empty field now seems to be the site of a big Roman settlement. But the weird thing about it is that none of the finds coming out of it are later than second century. This is a coin that we got out of the earth about five minutes ago with Roma sitting down, the goddess Roma, with uh, a shield there looking very much like Britannia on the old penny. So we're trying to sort out what was going on in that trench there and in that trench there and we've got two other trenches up there where we think we've got a Roman soldier's cemetery. So what's Mick doing? He's putting in another trench. Mick, <laughs> why do we need another hole in the ground? Because we're looking at the other side of this open elliptical area based on the geophysics. This uh, is where we are now, Tony. Yeah. In the middle here, you've just come from trench two. Yeah. And we decided to put a trench on the northern side of this ellipse where we've got, again, all these strong responses. What's so weird is that the whole project seems to have drifted away from what we originally thought we were going to get, which was the Roman cemetery. I mean, this is fantastically interesting, but it's not what we were looking for. Well, no, it's not, but at least we know that we haven't got high-status burials and mausolea in this area between the fort and the cemetery. Explains possibly why the cemetery is so far away. Yeah. Because it was servicing this side the of, town. of town. Mm. Now we've, we've got a, you know, a complete Roman settlement. Sort That's of, a sort of organised organised settlement around a central... Yeah, fantastic discovery, isn't almost it? Almost a green, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. So yet another trench goes in, in an effort to explain the complex archaeology of our newly discovered Vicus in the elliptical area. <laughs> God, this is going to take forever, and it? Uh, even if it just, At this rate. If it's just D and I. Barney! As one trench opens, another closes. In this case, trench one. Katie's just finishing excavating the one decent in situ cremation we've had. We've had about four, five, six maybe other sort of concentrations of burnt yeah. material that yeah. I think are cremations, but not that many. We're not doing an awful lot better over here at the moment. We've got one decent cremation in that trench, one in this trench. And we've got five or six other bits that obviously were cremations. So it's all very disturbing. No, and I mean, this, this hasn't really worked, has it, Chris, from what was on the geophysics? We thought we had a dead cert here, but... I thought well, we had a dead cert, dead to be cert. honest. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite interesting, actually, given that we want to find the condition of the cemetery. Yeah. I'm afraid Chris's dead cert was um, a medieval furrow. This is genuinely a really difficult area for yeah. us to Do work in. It. There's not enough yes. cremations. That sounds yeah. bad. Do you since part of our brief is to find out if there are any cremation burials left intact, we're going to continue searching using Geophys's other results. Meanwhile, our attempt at a Roman cremation called a bustum has survived the elements and been a success. Yeah, this is brilliant. This is just right. Our first attempt at a bustum. In fact, do you know anyone who's attempted one before? No, no, not really. So, I think of anyone. what have we learnt then? Well, the pyre has collapsed down into it, as we, we thought. And what you've got at the base is fine wood ash. You've also got some of the larger bits of, of charred wood, which didn't completely burn away. Mm -hmm. And then you can also see the bone still lying on top of the wood ash. With a bustum cremation, the pit was just filled in after the flames had died down. A more common form, and the evidence we're finding on our site, involves the ashes being taken and buried in an urn. We do have debris turning up. We've got pie debris. Remember the bits of charcoal and little bits of what looked like baked clay? And that debris looks like this debris? That debris looks like that, yeah. Back in the burial field, Chris is now certain that he's onto something. Yeah, we definitely have a target here. We've got a, a possible pit or cremation here. It's shown on both the cesium vapour and the flux gate. Oh, right, which that didn't, did it? No, that was only on the cesium vapour. Right. So where is it? Well, stand back. About there. How's about that? All right, OK. Two by two. Okay? Hopefully, yeah, fine, this yes. new trench will yield that elusive intact cremation urn. Meanwhile, Trench 2, in the field beside the fort, continues to support the theory that it once contained a busy settlement that ceased to operate sometime close to 200 AD. We have just had a bit of um, Samian out of here. I don't know whether you can put a date on that to date this. Basically, it's Hadrianic. So, so it's, it's in the frame, you know, yeah. second century again. Um, We've got no real clue as to whether it's um, uh, domestic or yeah. industrial. So well, We've got those bits of what looked like sort of furnace lining earlier on, didn't yeah. we, down, down in here. You've got a, re a fairly discreet little feature in here, haven't you, the pink, with the pink yeah. clay there, which is only undefined on that side over there. Um, you could 
get that defined and get it excavated. It's right at the head of this um, yeah. drain or yeah. flue thing. Yeah. You might have the, um, the business end of one of these industrial dryers or something of that sort. Have you had a chance to look at that coin that came up from Trench 2? Well, this, this is the coin, yes, this right. is the coin. Um, it's a bronze coin this time, um, and I think it's Antoninus Pius. 138 to 161. Although the coins are fantastic finds, Linz is most excited by yesterday's discovery of an intaglio, the inset from a ring that was used as a seal. It's made of glass, and the figure is carved out. You can see on the screen here, it's Achilles, and you've got his helmet there. And that's his cloak coming down here, mm -hmm. a spear coming up there. Now, what he's that. doing is he's carrying the spear and round shield of Thetis, and he's holding out stretched the helmet, the crested helmet, that's the body of the helmet, there's mm -hmm. the crest coming down here, of um, Peleus. Mm -hmm. So this is a very nice scene for a soldier because Achilles, of course, was the ideal hero, yeah. the sort of um, hero that a soldier was trying to pretend to be. Mm -hmm. This is something he's aiming to be. So it's a very nice one is altogether. Is that nice, or is he, is he naked, apart from the cloak? I don't think he's got a lot on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've looked closer, haven't you? Well, heroes don't wear a lot of clothes on the whole. They don't feel the cold. <laughs> So the intaglio gives us an idea of what ideals the soldiers based here aspired to. And like all the finds from the elliptical area, it's pre-200 AD. But the more intriguing these trenches get, the more careful we have to be, as first impressions aren't always what they seem. Can have a look at this? Look, these great big slabs of, of Roman roof tile. Oh. One of these with a legionary stamp on, don't we? Oh, you want jam on it, <laughs> don't you? But look how sharp it is. It's very fresh. That isn't has it? not actually been rolled around no. in the plough. No. I reckon that's coming up from, from some depth, and I reckon that probably the, the explanation is it's been cut through by that uh, land drain and it's coming up. <laughs> you know what this is, don't you? Well, it's Roman roof tile. It's horseshoe isn't it? shaped land drain. Horseshoe Victorian shape? land Yeah, we get it up here. Do you? But, yeah, I once had some pieces of this. Roman roof tile with nice lettering incised in them. And one had an R in, yeah. and one had I N, and then we had a complete one. It said drain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. But you've been fooled by this oh, stuff, yeah. then. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, Phil's disappointment's short-lived. You got a find for us? Oh, God, we've been talking about nothing else. Look, we've got this superb rosette with moulding on the side of a Samian bowl. This? Yeah. Isn't and it's beautiful. Are these figures? Yeah, it looks like two human figures, both naked. What are they doing? <laughs> well, well. <laughs> can you see? <laughs> well, what, what do you think these things well, are? Well, these down here look like throwing sticks. Yeah. Um, Lego Bolands is a posh name for them. But um, What's a throwing stick? Well, it's a stick you throw at something to kill it. Hang on. <laughs> You're calling us? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> we'll talk about that later yeah. on then. We'll have to. <laughs> Could that be pornographic? It could be indeed, yes. We need to look at it carefully, I think. We won't make a decision on that one. But it's Samian, isn't it's it? It's Samian, oh yes. Definitely oh, Roman. Yes. Look at this, it's just the most amazing, it's the biggest glass bead I've ever seen and it's beautiful. Oh, it's fabulous. Oh, it's lovely. Absolutely. Let me fabulous. get you some water. Yes, that okay. will bring up the colours. Oh, look at that. Oh, isn't, isn't that, that lovely. Wonderful. What is it? Well, it's a bead, um, but it's probably more likely to be a pendant than a, um, a necklace bead. Worn right. by women or men? Could be either, when I mean, it's something like this. But, oh, look at inside. See the swirly design of the white and turquoise glass? What sort of period do you think that might be? Um, it could be 1st century BC or 1st century AD. It's early. So is that the sort of thing they'd be making here, or are they importing that from oh, somewhere I think, else? I think this is likely to be something which is made in Britain, but possibly further south in Britain. It's something which has perhaps come up right. from um, Somerset area, something like that. But you've got these stripes here. These are actually inlaid into the yeah. molten glass. Um, they make up strips of lots of little different coloured stripes and then they inlay it and smooth it down afterwards. It's called marvering. Right, you called me over. Yes, I thought you might want to Ooh. have last, at last. Oh, that's a bit better. I mean, that really does look much more encouraging. That's the rim of a, a funeral. Well, it looks like we're the right way up, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? And I, it really encourages me because in the other trenches, all we've had is a sort of scraped off, moved around, destroyed bottoms and yeah. stuff. But this yeah. looks possibly as so if we might have something that's intact and the, yeah. the contents inside. So, this really is looking good, isn't it?
After all the fretting that this great site wasn't giving us the goods, Geophys's final suggestion for a trench has, with only hours to go, come up with what looks like an intact cremation burial. And if this find wasn't enough... What we've got here is a, is a, is a, is a big story about this section of Hadrian's Wall. This is the only area where there's a, a two, two sections of wall, in effect. One is a turf wall, which is earlier than the stone wall. Yeah. And Bird Oswald is the only place where these are separate. And there's got to be a reason for that, so I'm trying to work, trying to work out why that happened. And I think it relates to the geological processes and erosion here. What we've got is the escarpment. This is before the Romans arrive, in effect. We've got an escarpment with a tongue of land sticking out here, river down below. <clears throat> what happens next? is the building of the turf wall in this section here. Later on, they replace this with a stone fort here. Now what happens very quickly, all this area is built over. The problem they've got here is that they, they're right close to the edge of the escarpment. Mm. And what appears to happen at some time, oh, oof, oh, bang, <laughs> it goes just like that. Mm. This huge, great part of the... <laughs> escarpment just slumps away down to the riverbed at the bottom. So the closeness of the escarpment could have forced the stone wall further north. And if the cliff face fell away in such a dramatic fashion, that would certainly explain why the vicus west of the fort suddenly stopped being used. Tony, there is one piece of bad news, of course, which is that that beautiful model that you showed Mick and I on the first day <laughs> is now wrong. We'll have to get the Stanley knife. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I don't know, it's in incredibly good condition. Oh, it's one of those little accessory vessels. I'm joking. Well, that's what it looks like. It, well, it's, it's a Isn't tiny it? little sort of, yeah, little... Oh, wonderful. There's a rim on it here. That's beautiful. Have you any idea of date for it? Uh, well, it's colour-coated worth, 3rd century. Wow. And I think by the thickness of the rim, I think it's probably from the zoo somewhere in France like that. Really? Um, so would that have been quite expensive then? Yes, it's, it's an imported pot. I mean, this is, this is like Bernschwer by the looks of things. And that's yes, it's century as well, but um, with this one, you see, it's just... It's, it's very difficult to know whether this is part of the actual funeral rite, where the drinkers have been having a toast of the departed and thrown the pot in afterwards, or whether this is part of sort of the packed lunch to carry you from the grave to the underworld. After finding lots of trashed burials, we now have one that's fully intact. But how has this one survived and the others haven't? And why, in a cemetery that would have been very ordered, is the burial evidence all over the place? Mick has a theory. It's all to do with ploughing. If you imagine the field surface originally, this is a section, right, with the various cremations in the ground underneath like that. Yeah. And then in the med medieval period, there's ridge and furrow, and if I draw a section through it, so it, it was like that with the ridges and furrows. Some of this would have been um, wrecked and ploughed away. Whereas where you've got the ridge with the greater depth of soil, the cremation is preserved in, intact, which is what that one uh, in the corner was. And then in the 20th century, the farmer comes along and ploughs it all flat again. And of course, we're within, you know, centimetres or inches of wrecking the things that have survived yes, for all right. that length of time. So it's entirely due to the medieval ridge and furrow that any of these things have, yeah. have survived at all. It's very, very, fragile. very fragile. If you, I tell you, if you hold the... It's not really coming out. Yes, you've got it. Just let, let me slide it into the bag, I think, if you... Okay. I've got it. And we think that that would have contained some kind of ritual... Could have been Drink. wine on the journey up here for people in the funeral procession. Could have been wine for the dead person on their journey to the underworld. Or it could have been oils with, or something for pouring to the grave or quenching the flames of the pyre. Anything like that. But it's a beautiful piece. It's third century. It's French. It's imported. It's a really exotic item. It's, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. It looks like we're only minutes away from lifting the first intact cremation urn found on Hadrian's Wall. While the delicate work continues, it's time to close down the trenches in the field beside the fort, and the results are more surprising than we could have thought possible. We've got a flagstone floor. Yeah, that's, that, that's this stone here. Yeah. Did, yeah, and then it carries on underneath that wall the over there. The one's over there, yeah. 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 Then it's cut by uh, probably a second century Roman rubbish pit right. through here, and 
The latest phase is this rather rubbishy stone wall and where we had a hearth. Uh, oh, yeah. this is the red here, is it? Yeah. Oh, right. So and we're going to go for domestic rather than industrial. And look at this. I think it's the most incredible thing. An intaglio from Good a ring. Oh, Lord, look at that. It's a, a charioteer <laughs> driving four horses yeah. in profile. Yeah. Three days ago, we thought this elliptical area contained a road from the fort to the cemetery lined with mausolea. Now, with the evidence from the trenches, we think it must have been a busy vicus crammed with shops, houses and farmyards. And with Victor's help, we can envisage how this busy thoroughfare may have looked in its heyday. A settlement that went out of use around 200 AD, possibly because of some cataclysmic earth slip outside the town's edge. The finds that allowed us to find this out have been spectacular. But as we approach the end of the third day, I never thought I'd be so close to the remains of someone who actually lived in this town. This is the first complete excavation of a cremation at Bird Oswald, possibly of a Roman soldier who patrolled this distant frontier 1,700 years ago. Over on Civilization next, the team are back, searching for the secrets of the mysterious Knights Templar. Here on Discovery Channel, though, Mark Williams remembers a dangerous time to be on the rails.